Hi everyone, my name is Yaro and you're listening to the Embodied Business Podcast. That's my little dog. Hmm. <laughs> it's almost impossible to record without some dog sounds sometimes for me, but anyway, here you are. I'm here too. Hello. I want to talk today about the idea that perfectionism can cost us money. Just a tiny announcement before I do. In my web design studio, I'm currently booking for April. So if you're interested, get in touch. Um, the lead time has become a bit longer now that I'm doing other things as well and only doing web design part time. And the other announcement is that I'm offering a free virtual business retreat weekend again in January 21st and 22nd. I would love to have you there and I'll link to that to the show notes as well. All right. So perfectionism. I think I've talked about perfectionism on this podcast in one way or another, at least in 20 episodes, because it's something I'm super, super passionate about. It's in my experience, you know, obviously I can't speak for everyone. I'm only engaging this kind of small fraction of the internet that's very close to my heart. But in my experience of that little fraction of the internet, perfectionism is the number one thing that's holding people back from taking the next step, trying something new, earning more money, getting their own needs met in their business and not feeling overwhelmed. And I really get it because I think perfectionism, for me at least, comes from a place of really deep people pleasing. I talked about that with the wonderful AJ Bond for my other podcast called Creative Devotion. And we just unpacked that a little bit, this idea that, you know, people pleasing is real um, we're socialized to do it and it feels really good and that felt really kind of refreshing to admit you know we were both talking about being people pleasers and how we wanted to stop that but before we went on to say you know like <laughs> I, I want to change that about myself we also just were like you know what it just feels good to be liked Um, that's the honest truth and um, I think if we're admitting that to ourselves and kind of breaking it down a little bit it is ultimately about belonging safety and um, being accepted and those are totally totally human things to want so if you are in the space of feeling that you're holding quite a lot of perfectionism in your life right now um, and you want to please people you really want to get it right I hope that you can meet that with a lot of compassion because, like I said, it is just really human and we're living in strange and confusing times, you know, and so, you know, whatever comes up for you around that is probably totally okay, but probably also totally worth looking at because it really might be holding you back and it might be costing you some money. So let me say more about what I mean by that. As a small business owner or as a freelancer, you're making obviously a lot of small day-to-day -day decisions. You're deciding on what to post, what to share about yourself, when to send a newsletter, what to say in your newsletter, what prices you want to ask for, what you want to offer, what your branding colors are, how you're going to do your bookkeeping, <laughs> if you want to be on Instagram or not. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? There are so many decisions to make. And too much attachment to getting it right is obviously going to result in overwhelm. You're going to have a much easier time in your business if at least to some extent you're really trusting yourself and you're not constantly outsourcing um, your decision-making processes. Of course, there's a time and a space to get feedback that's really valuable and being open to that is really beautiful, especially if you can get it in a supportive, gentle, nurturing community. Um, but if you are feeling not able to make your own decisions at the same time and really trusting your gut and your intuition, then that can become a problem. Um, I also think it relates to the idea that starting imperfectly is really better than getting stuck and doing nothing at all. So to me, that is also about self-awareness. Um, there is, of course, you know, a, a, a way of doing things that's just um, slow and considered and beautiful and you're giving yourself time and space to really feel into things. And it becomes um, 
or it flips to a shadow side or it becomes a problem when it is just taking so much time and space to make those decisions that you're feeling constantly frustrated with where you're at and you're often feeling that you're kind of behind. And trust me, I know that feeling really well. It definitely still comes up for me sometimes. I definitely still have imposter syndrome. But I kind of try to get myself out of that really quickly. And I think that's really um, an exercise in self-awareness because at this point in my business, I can tell when I'm sliding into this shadow side of just kind of procrastinating so hard or wanting it, wanting to get it right so badly that I just waste a bunch of time when I actually could be doing things that are way more effective in my business. So let me give you an example. Again, I have talked about this before, but it's just so important to me that I want to touch on it again. Podcasting is something, as you know, that I really love doing. I have two podcasts. I've been podcasting for over six years and if I had, if, if I were a perfectionist about it, firstly, I probably would have never started. And secondly, I certainly would have not carried on. Um, you will, if you go back into the archive of both of my podcasts, see that I have diff had different kinds of intros. I currently don't really have um, a pre-recorded intro. I kind of record custom intros for each episode. Um, I also don't have an outro. That's something I've been meaning to get on top of for a while and I just haven't gotten to it yet. Does it stop me from podcasting? Certainly not. <laughs> um, and also you'll find that there's really been ebbs and flows in how much I've been podcasting. So there have definitely been seasons where I was able to commit to a fortnightly um, episode for each podcast. And then there's also been little gaps occasionally. And I think what's been really important for me in staying consistent is that I haven't been beating myself up for those pauses. So when I haven't podcasted for a month or I haven't published an episode for um, four weeks or whatever, I I just get back into it. You know, I don't dwell on that feeling for very long that I have dropped the ball and I haven't been in touch because I know I trust myself and I know that sometimes maybe I needed that space and that's okay but I have gone through these cycles of like oh my gosh I dropped the ball never mind I'll just get back into it now so many times that it's not a big deal to me anymore I would initially also sometimes apologize and come out with a new episode and say oh my god I'm so sorry I've not been in touch and the truth is I think most people don't even notice you know of course um, weekly podcasts are really beautiful I listen to a few I love them I really am so grateful for all that the host is offering I know that is a ton of work um, but I also know myself that if they took a break I probably wouldn't notice that and so that's that's really helpful for me to think about sometimes another example is my newsletter when I started my newsletter a bit over nine years ago I think certainly before I really thought of my work as a business I didn't have a strategy I didn't really have a cool welcome sequence I didn't have branding I was initially on MailChimp um and I'm now with MailerLite, well, that's a different story. And, you know, I just didn't have a concept for the whole thing overall. But again, I didn't let that stop me from sending out my newsletter. I just shared what I wanted to share. That certainly changed a whole lot over the years. And people always had the option to leave if they wanted to. And I've also always been honest with the fact that things in my change, you know, my interests do change. What I prioritize changes. What I'm willing to share has changed. And uh, I'm allowed to go with the ebb and flow of my creativity and people are allowed to come and leave within my newsletter as they please. Um, one more example I think is Instagram. Now I've not been in Instagram in almost two years. I've never regretted leaving. I'll certainly um, record an episode just on that. But I think I got on there in 2014 and it was a really different landscape. I also didn't have a concept or branding or created feed or any of that stuff. I was just trying to have fun. And I think in that first stage of my business, it was really the most important thing to be experimental and to create space for myself to take small risks, you know, within what was comfortable mm -hmm. for me, pushing myself in small ways, being supported by people and having that feedback and um, but yeah, that was really helpful. As someone called Ren Silverstein, who I really appreciated, 
uh, appreciate still, um, shared this idea of echolocating. And that's really stayed with me because I think sometimes when we just take that step, um, you know, to send the first newsletter or to start a podcast or to post something on YouTube, for example, we begin to get that feedback. And sometimes it's really subtle and only energetic. It doesn't necessarily mean that you get an email back from someone or you get a comment and they're saying something like, oh my gosh, I love this. It can be much more subtle than that, but it can still be super valuable. And you can really only get that feedback or that echolocating um, sense if you actually do the thing and you overcome your perfectionism. And that's also obviously how you get better. I think that's another really, really important um, piece to think about is that you can't get better if you're not getting started. Right? I'm just going to let that sink in. <laughs> Another thing I want to say is that most people really value intimacy over perfection. Um, and what do I mean by intimacy? You know, that can mean so many different things. It doesn't necessarily mean having a cuddle on the sofa, which is one of my favorite kinds of intimacy. But I think in an online business space, it's probably more around being able to connect with someone's story really seeing a little bit behind the scenes of what's going on for them, um, getting to see a little part of why they care so much, you know, what their practice is about and so forth. That still means you get to have boundaries. You don't have to share everything about yourself. Um, but yeah, to me, that's a really helpful reminder. It's not perfectionism that people connect with. It's intimacy and honesty and openness. Um, it might also be helpful for you to ask yourself what you think it means to be a professional because I think sometimes we think we have to be perfect in order to also be perf professional. I call bullshit on that and I think that doesn't mean to me that I'm not professional, you know, but I, when I'm unpacking that word, actually other things come up for me. I'm thinking that um, being honest reliable and knowledgeable is professional to me so when I decide to work with someone I really want to feel that they're being honest about what they can can and cannot offer I want them to be reliable to stick to what we've agreed on and I want them to be knowledgeable within the field that we're working in together but none of that means that I need that person to be perfect and that's yeah really important Okay, one more tip. If you're feeling imposter syndrome and you feel that you're surrounded by people who are perfect and have it all figured out and they just came out right off the gate with all these amazing ideas, use the website Time Machine. You'll come across some pretty weird stuff. So if you Google website Time Machine, uh, you'll come uh, and find this little website archive and you can put a domain in at the top and then usually if there is a record for that domain it will show you what that domain has looked like through the years i've done that for myself just now let me tell you it was super cringe i saw my 2017 portfolio i just had a little giggle about myself i mean i was a totally different person then i had totally different priorities i you know would i put those things on my website now no certainly I wouldn't I uh, no <laughs> basically no um, and it does give me feelings you know that I just there was a lot I didn't know then and that's okay it's five years ago but I know in my heart that if I had held myself back at that time if I had really indulged my perfectionism just wouldn't be where I'm today and that makes me wonder also, like, is this ever going to change? Am I going to look back in five years time on 2022 and feel that super cringe? Maybe, yeah. And I'm willing to take that risk because I believe in what I'm doing so much that I don't mind. I think that's part of, you know, growing as a person and evolving in your business. So I hope that this has given you something to think about. I hope that you can meet yourself with self-compassion and that you can find that middle ground of feeling ready and being honest where maybe you need a little bit more time and some feedback and some market research, but also trusting yourself to just take that leap, even if it's not going to be perfect, because that is how you grow. If you want to talk about it some more, I hope to see you at my free retreat. Um, if you like this episode, please leave a review. That would be wonderful. And again, thank you so much for listening.